The Ministry of Civil Aviation has come up with Draft Civil Drone Bill on 16th September 2025, known as Draft Civil Drone Promotion and Regulation Bill 2025. It is a draft bill which was open to public and industries for their comments and suggestions till 30 September 2025. So the date of submitting your suggestion might be over, but we would look into the details of the bill and see how it would impact most of us, the most of us who use it for traveling and recreational purposes, and also those who are using it for agriculture surveying in other applications. Please note that this is a bill. It will be passed in parliament and would hold a great amount of power. And based on this bill, new act will be formed which would lead to new rules. If you want to understand the difference between bill and rule, then consider this example. So a bill would mention you must have a license to drive and how to apply fees, test processes, renewal conditions, etc. This would be mentioned in the rule. So in this draft bill on civil drone, a lot has been added about punishment and legal action that can be taken on the drone operator, confiscation of drone, etc., which we are going to see in details. Hello guys, my name is Gaurav and you're watching me on Log on to Gaurav. Presently, we are being guided by Drone Rules 2021 with some amendments that were made in 2022. You can find the links to all these documents in the description below. So I have covered everything about 2021 rules in this video and more in detail in this video in Hindi where I have answered the most common questions. So please go check out those videos for the existing rules that are applicable to us right now. Also, I have a series of shots on this topic where in less than three minutes, you can understand everything about the present rules. In this video, we are going to see what is mentioned in the draft bill and what would become the rules in the future. So let's first see the applicability of this act. So it is applicable on Indians, foreigners who would be flying the drones in India. It is also applicable to Indians flying their drones registered in India in any other country. So if we have registered your drone in India and are flying it in say Mauritius, then this act is applicable to you. Also, this act is applicable to all drones up to 500 kgs, means nano category drones like DJI mini series of drones also come under this act. Going ahead, in definition sections, I found an interesting thing. Export means taking out of India. That's it. It doesn't refer to selling or buying. Merely taking out of India is termed as export. Similarly, bringing into India is termed as import. So I'm a little confused here. So if I go on an international trip and take our drone which we bought in India to that country, will it be called as export? And similarly, bringing it back from our trip will it be called as import. What are your thoughts on this? Let me know in the comments. Next relevant point to consider comes in registration of unmanned aircraft system wherein it is mentioned that every drone needs to be registered. Further, it is written that in a manner specified by DGCA. So it means every drone has to be registered unless DGCA explicitly exempts some category of drones like nano drones from registration. The second point is more interesting. It says that drones cannot be sold unless they have been registered. So will the seller be registering the drone before selling? Who would be liable to get the drone registered? What would you prefer? seller doing the registration or the user doing the registration let me know in the comments next point is insurance and it says that no person shall operate a drone unless it has been insured or dgc exempts certain category from this mandatory insurance so maybe dgc can say that drones in nano category can be exempted from insurance etc but i think it's not going to be the exemption because in present rule there is no exemption for any category of drone so most likely it won't be there in the future then in next few sections, detail under the insurance have been defined. Here in these sections, it defines the amount of compensation, then there would be claim tribunals to process the claim, etc. Then we come to a very important section, remote pilot certificate, which says that no one shall operate the drone without a remote pilot certificate issued by DGCA in a manner specified by the central government. So here, the government would guide the requirement of a remote pilot certificate, not the DGCA. That's the difference here. Then it says that drone must be type certified as usual. Then there is very important stuff. The most important I would say that is import. So it says that import shall be regulated by DGFT, Directorate General for Foreign Trade. So I went to DGFT website to know what they say about drones and I found this one. So there is no new circular but the same old one which says that drone are in restricted category and would require a prior clearance from DGCA and DGFT. No good news here. Then the bill talks about airspace, which is same as earlier, red, yellow and green zones and the government shall publish the map, which would clearly mark these areas on the map. And these areas can be dynamic, meaning they would keep on changing. So for example, during a Republic Day, more of the area around Delhi could be in the red zone or during a VIP moment in certain areas, that area can be converted into a red zone. So we have to always check before flying the drone. Now comes the chapter three, 
prohibition and prevention of misuse. So it says that you cannot carry anything illegal in your drone, which makes sense. Then it says government authorities can issue orders to not fly drones if they think that it is in the interest of security of India. And these orders or directions are applicable to any class of drones, be it nano drone used for cinematic purpose also. Your certificate or authentication can be cancelled or suspended or can be asked to submit it with the government. Chapter 4. Other Offenses and Penalties So this section specifies what happens if you break drone laws in India. Let's keep it simple. First, the punishment. If you fly or use drones without following the rules, like not registering your drone, not having pilot training or certificate or ignoring safety features, you can get jail up to one year or fine up to one lakh rupees or both. But relax, these cases are non-cognizable and compoundable. That means police can't arrest you directly and in most cases, they can be settled by paying a penalty. Second, what about your drone? If authorities think the drone violates the rule, they can seize your drone document or devices for investigation or if they can't take the drone physically they can order you to not use without the permission third how long can they keep your drone so normally up to three days with higher approval they can go up to seven days more than that they need a court order you can also get your drone back temporarily by giving a security deposit or bond after that, the case will go to the usual criminal law proceeding in India. Going further down the bill, it says that your remote pilot certificate and approval can also be cancelled if you break the rules. Then rule says about the compounding, meaning the settlement of the offences. Coming down, if you abit, meaning encourage or assist someone to do something wrong, equal punishment is applicable to you. So for example, you are an event organizer and you have hired the drone operators and you are filming stuff and if those drone operators are not following the law, then you are equally liable to be punished under this rule. Further ahead, there is an interesting section, saving for acts done in good faith. It basically says that if you are doing something in good faith, then no action will be taken on you. Great, that's relieving. So looking in the bill, I didn't find anything appealing that would compromise the freedom of drone enthusiast in flying the drone. Few things that are expected to get boost up is registration of drone and adherence to flying zones. I'm a bit skeptical about ease and process of carrying a drone in foreign country or bringing one back home. But let's see and hope for the best. So this was all in the video. Let me know your opinion about civil drone bill. And if you like the video, don't hesitate to show some love and please subscribe for more such videos. Bye bye.